Hi, my name is Phoenix Wing, and this is my independent study project for Computer Science 3 SL. In order for the client to use the program, they have to have an additional resource folder called Website with all of the resources located inside of the same folder as the program. Upon launching the program, Phoenix Website Maker version 1.0, they are prompted with these prompts for each aspect of their website. First of all, it gives enter title of page. If the user is confused as to what this could mean, then they can look over here and see each corresponding element of the website to the prompt. Right here, the page title is at the very top, so they know that it could be the title of the page if that isn't gotten from the text. Now, the client would be any anybody who wishes to have a website and an online presence, which could be a small business owner or an individual. Now, let's say for the sake of argument that this individual is somebody by the name of Jeff Mickle. So enter the name Jeff Mickle into the website title. Now, for enter content header, the client, if they don't know what content header can mean, they can look over here and see that, oh, it's at the top of the page. It heads off the content down here. Now, for the content header, I'll just enter it. As the client, this is my website. Now for the main body content, it's all of the main, main information that the client would want the person accessing their website to see. Now I already have content inside of my clipboard, which I'll just paste here. All right, now that I pasted all this content here, I'll enter an additional few characters just for the sake of demonstrating the versatility of this program and a couple tabs. Now, we'll see when we open up the website that normally such characters would be interpreted by the web browser as HTML syntax which conflicts with the characters themselves and doesn't allow them to be correctly displayed. The program would therefore allow us to, in theory, correctly display these characters. Now the email address would just be the email address of the client. So I'll put down Jeff Nickel at brownbrownisd.org. And the image title, as we see here, is just a title for the image. Now perhaps the client would want a photograph of themselves on their website. So I'll put my photo. And for the image URL, it would be the URL for the file of their image. Now, I already prepared the file of my photo on my own website. So mikko.jpg would be that file. And for the image caption down here, it would just be something related to the image perhaps as the caption and I'll put this is a beautiful photograph which reflects the artistic abilities of myself and for the link text it would be what they would want on their link and as a link, which could perhaps allow them to have the user visit an additional website which may be of interest to them. So I'll put click here, exclamation mark. And for the link hyperlink, that would just be the hyperlink for the link. And maybe the client, Jeff Mickle, really likes the website by the name of mickle.net. All right, now finally, select color scheme. Over here, you can see two of the five available color schemes. Now, let's just assume that the client really likes a ring and tan orange, and I'll select a ring and tan orange. Now, what if the client wishes to go back and change some part of the website? Maybe they forgot which field corresponded to which element. Now, over here, if you hover over each of the fields, it prompts the client to 
for the instructions as to what to enter into the field. Enter title of page, enter content header, enter main body content, and so forth. Now, the main body content, in addition, allows the client to have complete access, scrolling through and entering whatever they wish. Now I'll click create website. Before doing so, notice, notice this desktop over here and notice this space right here while I'm clicking create website. All right, now that I clicked it, this folder was created by the program and placed on the, webs on, on the desktop. And it tells you right here, success, Jeff Mickle is now your desktop. And the folder now has a name of Jeff Mickle. I'll double click the folder and see that this information, all of the website information is inside of the folder. Now double clicking index.html of course gives you the HTML file for the website. And the website is now complete on the web browser. So each element that the user filled out replaced each element of the original website. So of course it's titled Jeff Mickle and in addition the HTML page itself is also titled Jeff Mickle. This is my website and now the symbols here. Of course the symbols displayed accurately as the user typed them. How? This is because, let's see, page source. The program replaced the symbols that would commonly appear in HTML syntax with UTF-8 HTML symbol replacements, such as the and symbol, the and character is replaced by this, the right bracket, was replaced by this and the left bracket was replaced by this. In addition, the tabs which normally don't get read by the web browser is replaced by this which tells the web browser that there's a tab. Now whenever there's a new line, the program replaces that new line with bracket br, which represents break or new line in HTML syntax, and does it twice to provide a more clearly defined break. Now, going back to the website, of course all the text displays correctly, and the captions displays correctly, and the photograph displays correctly. Now this contact button right here, if you click it, there's co animation that shows up down there, and it links directly to a prompt which allows the user of the website to email the client. Now, I'll just go back to the website, and for a click here, it links it to the client's website as they intended it to. All right, so, however, this isn't all that you can do with the website, with the program. Now, Say if, if the client really likes symbols and all. Now, file systems really don't like this. So I'll put all these weird symbols up there. All right. And I'll additionally do create website again. Now, it doesn't do anything else because there's already a Jeff Mickle folder on the desktop. But if I do Jeff Mickle 1, all the symbols are parsed and excluded from the folder name such that there was only alphanumeric characters. And Jeff Mickle 1 appears on the desktop. Now, for the original Jeff Mickle with all the symbols, in addition, the program knows to rewrite the index.html to include all the symbols. And Jeff Mickle 1 is as shown as expected. Now the final button right here, upload a server. If I click it, it says that you're uploading. What this does is that it uploads the website folder that 
was originally created inside of this program to my private server. And it's pretty slow because it's my private server running on a Raspberry Pi. And what it does is it accesses a subdirectory of the website, which is www, which allows for private and secure file transfer protocol communication between the program and the server. So let's go to that link right there. The link works. This is the web this is the mobile layout of the website, which is why it's upright. But if you full screen it, this is the desktop layout. The client is online on the World Wide Web. Thank you.